So I'm currently working in TCS and I'm currently means for the last five and a half years I'm actually working for the same uh, same client that is the JD Williams client and which is the UK based retail account. Uh, previously what we uh, what I have like uh, we have like one monolithic architecture that was based on hybrid and now what we are doing we are actually breaking down into microservice level and uh, we are actually following agile. So the roles and responsibilities that I'm uh, having in my project uh, that is basically the development part uh, I need to do like functionalities uh, development for our client apart from that uh, I have like uh, unit testing uh, like uh, bug fixing and all and also we are actually following agile so we have like daily scrum calls so in that scrum call we need to decide means what are the uh, what are the new features they will gonna add so in that way we are actually maintaining the Jira tickets and share among our, amongst our team uh, so that is the main roles and roles and responsibilities that I'm having. And apart from my uh, roles and responsibilities, my technical stats are like I'm uh, back in Java developer, and here we are using Spring Boot microservices. Apart from that, we are using uh, Kafka for inter-service communication, and also like uh, for versioning, we are using Git. And uh, for like uh, for like pipelines and all, we are actually using Jenkins for CI/CD pipeline. Apart from that, for uh, for DB purpose, we are using AWS DynamoDB, uh, and for unit testing and all, we are using like JUnit uh, with Mockito framework. Uh, those are the main thing we are actually using, and also Docker Docker container we are using for uh, building and testing purpose. So you mentioned about uh, uh, using AWS DynamoDB. Uh, what other database are you familiar with? What was the monolithic application? Uh, in the monolithic architecture, we are actually having Oracle, Oracle 11G. Yeah, actually worked with, uh, at that time, I actually worked with uh, like SQL, SQL DB, means no uh, <coughs> relational, relational database. Uh, in, this app, in this application, we are actually having like uh, the Postgres SQL, but I am actually not familiar with that. I actually have like one one service that is based on like Postgres SQL. Apart from that, mainly what you are using, we are actually using AWS AnnoDB. Okay, so what version of Java are you using? Now mainly Java 8. And are you familiar with any front end technologies or you are pure back end developer? No, actually the thing is like we are, uh, I am not that into front end. We have like separate team for front end, uh, in Sama completely like back end developer only. Um, so, uh, so you mentioned it's an agile process yes. and you get stories on the Jira board. Are you familiar with what non functional requirements are? What? Sorry? Are you familiar with non functional requirements? Non functional requirements? Uh, non-functional requirements are, I, I mean to say like the, uh, let's say we have some uh, Jira tickets for uh, like mainly, uh, mainly just tracking, tracking those things, it means we are actually doing like, uh, like, like testing, like unit testing and all, we actually have created those uh, Jira tickets just to maintain this, maintain that we are actually working. Uh, just to keep the sequence done. Apart from that, uh, non Jira ticket. So you are saying? Yeah, sorry. Uh, I'm talking about non functional requirements. Uh, I'm not talking about the way you track stories in Jira. Okay. I'm asking, are you familiar with non functional? For example, anything related to performance, anything that you have to handle apart from the functionality that is being asked to change. Okay. Um, that is actually we we actually don't do in performance. Actually, uh, there is a separate separate team we have in our PCS. Okay. They actually look into okay. the performance okay. part. Okay, that's fine. Um, so, how many team members are there? Sorry, how many? 
team members? Uh, mainly we have like uh, two two developers here yeah, and one one tester and one one lead. Mainly like in in our squad. Uh, in our squad means in product squad means I'm actually part of the product squad. We actually have two different teams, and in each team we have like uh, four, four uh, mainly mainly four team members with uh, two developers, one tester, and one one lead. Uh, so it's a total size of four members in one squad. Yes, in our in our in our total squad we actually have like total eight members, but they are actually uh, grouped into two different teams. I am part of the okay. PRS team, and they are part actually part of the POS team. Okay, and what's the sprint duration? Uh, it's two weeks. Is that including weekends or is it only weekdays? No, no, no. Actually, uh, part of means the five and five, the like ten days. Not, okay. not the weekend. How do you give your estimation? Is it done in hours or is it story points or how do you give your estimation? Oh, so mainly uh, what we actually do means uh, means if it's a big story means we have to analyze first means what are the what are the story requirements and in that way we actually analyze at means before giving into the story point we actually have like uh, screen planning before the story before the screen planning we actually have the list of the stories and we actually go through each and each and every story and check what are the what are the requirement things that we have to perform and what are the requirement means what are the tentative changes that we have to do so in that way we actually uh, calculate like uh, let's say uh, it's a big story point we actually uh, divide them into two parts let let's say it's a 13 13 story point we actually divide them into 8 and 5 uh, so first part eight is eight. Whenever the story point is eight, we actually define like uh, three or five is the development time and three actually the testing time. So in that way, we actually uh, create the means means we actually give the story point in the sprint planning. And before the sprint planning, okay. we have actually internal internal meeting. So discuss about what are the what are the things we need to do. What are the processes that you follow in Agile? I mean, do you have, do you have daily scrum calls? Yes. And what, what else do you have? What are the meetings do you have? Uh, mainly we have like daily, daily scrum calls is there. And apart from that we have like uh, one sprint planning is there. And one retrospective also is there. And uh, it, actually this is the part of the uh, part of the Agile process we are following. And apart from that if everything means if, if anything required urgently uh, Scrum must actually uh, schedule one call to get into touch with the PO and we can actually discuss about the things and uh, means what are the what the functionality they actually want. If we have some doubt then we can actually uh, share our doubt and get get the feedback, get the feedback from the PO and we can actually start the development. Okay, got it. So, so what do you discuss in your planning So mainly, uh, mainly uh, Means what we actually do means the scrum scrum master actually uh, puts down in an Excel Excel format. In that Excel, we have like uh, each and every story is defined, and with the with the sprint number, uh, they actually uh, telling us this is the this is the story that is assigned to the, let's say the story is assigned to me. So I can actually discuss about the things means okay this this is the story and this is the part that we have to do. Is non a very technical way we actually deal with the scrum master. Just minimalistic uh, that we need to uh, we need to have like changes over this service or that that service. So in that way we actually uh, mention that and then we actually give the story pointing based on uh, the development effort and as well as the uh, testing effort. And, and the what are the Specific to what you're working, and if you can also explain um, a recent change that you did, a recent story that you did. Okay, okay, yeah. So, uh, so what we are doing, we actually means previously I have told you like we have uh, like one monolithic architecture that was based on Hypris, and now we actually breaking down into microservice. And now I am the part of the product squad. We act, we actually have like different squad. Mine uh, mine is product squad. We have like payment squad. We have like promotion squad. Uh, so these are the squads are uh, defined, and in my product squad, what we are actually doing, we are actually creating the creating the products. Let's say base product and skew products we are actually creating, and then we are actually uh, dealing with means uh, the delta operation also. Delta operation means if the feed is not complete, means already the, already the product is present, then uh, 
if uh, the business wants to change some some of the variables they will not actually send the whole feed that was sent previously just to create the base and skew uh, they actually sending the delta delta one where uh, that ju just that just the thing like uh, what are the what are the changes with the with the attributes they are sending and also if they want to delete something we actually have like one attribute called delete and uh, with those actually we actually sending the attribute names so what we do basically as part of delta means from the service level we actually get those get those fields and actually check that uh, what are the deleted attributes in that way we actually using the property descriptor uh, to get the get the field and also we actually check the type and then uh, setting as null just to delete that from the dynamodb so this is the, like the like the changes what i am recently recently doing actually have like uh, from 7 we have like uh, one small internal demo of this del delta part and apart from that uh, we also worked in grouping pa grouping product as well grouping means um, just is that what one just 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 to introduce yeah. you right so um, i think i'm hearing that you know, have a monolithic application and you need from that to uh, the service specific architecture you have got a core product that you working on now what's this product all about Okay. Now, this, this the product is. Yeah. I understand it's it's a reality customer you have getting mm -hmm. into the product. What does the product do? Yeah, the product. What functionality? Okay. Uh, the product is basically uh, they uh, they are actually running uh, different different uh, geographical sites. Uh, we have like simplyb.com which is uh, which is running on uh, US. We have like highandmighty.co.uk that is running on uh, running on UK. So this is the this is the thing and they are actually selling like omens omens fitware uh, mainly simplyb.com is completely like omens omen uh, means omens omens collection in high and mighty we have like the mains collection also and uh, and what do you, what do you ask means uh, what are the functionalities yeah so from a business perspective yeah. what does this application do as well as that uh means the application that was done means the monolithic architecture or just you are wanting to know okay architecture okay means okay okay so mainly mainly uh, they actually have uh, running one retail retail uh, retail site like just uh, just like amazon or flipkart uh, where user actually registers over there and from that from the registration they actually have like <coughs> separate separate my account and also have like card information also and in that in that they actually get uh, get the get the get the home page get the home page open and they can actually see like what are the what are the new things that uh, that is come on or let's say if there is some offer they are actually showing uh, in the in the banner in the banner we are actually showing them so in that way uh, uh, user actually goes to goes to that uh, goes to that category category search we actually have like category search on product search also there so in that category search they can actually find different categories uh let's say uh, dresses footwear uh, something like that <coughs> so in that way if uh, they actually they are actually clicking those category so mainly what we are show, what we are actually showing we are showing the plp uh, where we have like listed all the all the products and there there we have like different search option as well let's say someone actually wants to search uh, with the color let's say red dresses then we have like red dresses uh, to show them uh, as a in a, in a plp and also we have like uh, a different different brand search as well someone goes for this brand then we actually goes for the filter filter operation so in this way they actually comes to the plp and select what are the what are the things they want and after uh, they so after they like satisfied with the with some product they go to the uh, go to the pdp section with opening just uh, opening this one product they can actually see like what are the what are the product description over there and uh, means okay, okay. Yeah. yeah but that, that, that's fair enough um, so is this really web based or is there a mobile um, side of support is there a mobile application for no uh, mobile application uh, actually we have like the mobile application also but they are actually not quietly built up for mobile that is the web application running on a running on a app not the exact mobile application we have actually built up only the web application is there and so actually we are the web application uh, basically it is a responsive one so we actually integrate that into a app but not like exactly development we actually done for the app okay um 
Now, you also said that recent times are still a few questions about recent change. Yes. Uh, do you remember anything specific, any specific user story that you worked on? Yeah, just recently, uh, what I have told you, like we are actually working on the delta part of the delta part of the product saving, uh, where we are actually getting a less number of feed, means less number of attribute feed, and in that way, what we are actually doing means uh, the less number of attribute feed is fine. We actually defined uh, two of the two of the main uh, main attribute that is the that is the primary key that we have like in the Dynamo DB, just to. Just to make sure that uh, they are sending like product number and the website code. So after that, they can actually send uh, whatever the whatever the thing they want, and they cannot actually change like the product number and the website code. Uh, from this, we actually have like certain certain checks to uh, identify that uh, the product number or the website code is not changing. Apart from that, what are the new attributes that is coming? So, so yeah. yeah. So, sorry, Brian. So are these new attributes or no? These are these are the, the no. Skip. These are the not not new attributes. These are the old attributes, but with the new value. Let's say uh, product description. Uh, previously, for let's say the one two three product 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 description was like uh, let's say dresses. Now they are want to they want to change that description to dresses to shoes. So only okay. that okay. attribute okay. is coming. Okay. Not the whole attribute is coming. Previously, what we are getting uh, the full attribute means. Uh, the total means let's say we have like 20 uh, 20 odd attributes actually more than that so all are coming uh, so in this in this scenario the delta part we are actually receiving let's say only product description is changing only we are sending the product description and also okay, for okay, like got it. yeah okay okay understood um now uh, you said it's UK based did you interact directly mm -hmm. with the customers or is it your on site that you interact with. Do you, do you have interactions with customers? Yes, uh, we actually interact with the customers uh, customer directly. Uh, in the Scrum call, customer uh, sometimes they are actually not present, but mainly the customer means our PO basically present in the Scrum calls. Uh, if we have like, uh, means what I have told you, like if we need uh, something more means apart from the apart from the scrum call where we have actually not discussed about the total things we, because we have like 30 minutes of scrum call everyone uh, needs to give their uh, bid so we have like different uh, different call set up the scrum master actually does the job means they are actually setting different call and directly we can actually uh, talk to the customer and means tell them means whatever whatever things that uh, we are gonna facing as a challenges and this sort of thing or like to clear a clear our idea about the means what to do. Okay, okay. So some more questions and in terms of you know your understanding on, on the functionality. So can you explain the uh, how do you compare soap and rust? Soap and rest. Okay. Uh, actually not familiar with soap. Uh, uh, okay. Let's okay. so, so, tell about. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, rest is basically like uh, when you are when you are sending sending one uh, request and we are actually sending as an endpoint and in that in that endpoint we actually define what are the means uh, what 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 type of method that is the get method or the post method. In that way, we actually uh, configure them in the REST controller, and we get that uh, get that endpoint through the through the response mapping also, and also like combining with the post mapping or let's say gate mapping. So in that way, we actually fetch the fetch the request and process the request through the through the endpoint only. And mainly for this, we are actually using like Postman. Also, we have like Swagger uh, inbuilt. So we actually use both for using the rest of queries. Okay, so we are using Swagger as well? Yes. Can you explain the difference between the jar and the raw file? Okay. Uh, <coughs> How do you explain that? Do you want to work with it? Actually not work with what? Uh, but honestly you can I actually read that. Uh, but <laughs> means jar and the water actually it's a difference. 
whatever means i read that uh, jar actually uh, when you are actually building the jar we can actually di- means the jar can have like directly we can uh, we can start that is combine with the combine with the server but what we have like uh, if we made the war file then we have to separately deploy that into a de- deploy them into your server to work with um which one needs to be deployed in the server to work with uh for different for different server we have like war file but the jar actually can uh, directly we can actually directly up them in my java minus jar we can actually directly up the up the service but i think war uh okay. that's fine um so okay so you haven't worked with the war mm-hmm. actually not worked with war Now, have you, do you have experience with security vulnerabilities in the code, like port quality, um, do you use any specific tool to yeah. scan your code and then work on it? Uh, yes, examples? we have, we have like, uh, for static analysis, we have like SonarCube, but uh, SonarCube actually not uh, like configuring the SonarCube uh, done, by, done by us, they actually have like separate platform team. but we can actually see what are the what are the critical major uh, defects that is part of the part of the part of the service then we are actually following uh, following them and and we actually change them in the in the code and also we actually have like uh, sep- separately we have like uh, coverage coverage checking also then we actually means if the coverage is not more than 90% then we actually uh, not uh, pushing that into a higher higher level so we have received such such a comment what do you do in that scenario uh yes uh, we uh, if we if we receive such such comments then uh, we actually uh, changing let's say let's say i'm giving one example what i have not recently got uh, we have like uh, in a, in a, in a method uh, where we have like several if conditions one if and then next if and then next if in that way the code was written so uh i think the method um, method number actually I don't, i don't know the exact term uh but the number could not be uh, more than more than 15 so in that way like first if is the one number second two third one is the three in that way uh, the no, it it actually got calculated so uh, in that way we actually uh, means separating separating uh, with different different private methods and to call them call them separately in that way we actually minimize the method uh, number basically exactly not uh, remembering the term and also we have like separate uh, separate null null checks are there we have like uh, some of the some of the null checks also we actually uh, do for the uh, do it after like sonar sonar analysis Okay. So the framework that we use for unit testing, you said J unit. Yes. What else are you familiar with? Sorry. What else are you familiar with other than J unit? Do you have any um, similar other frameworks? Not exactly familiar with, by, but I can actually uh, work with the Spock testing as well, where we have like a Groovy, uh, Groovy file, where we are uh, means creating the Groovy file and testing the testing the methods. that also actually part of the j unit only but i mean j unit is the java java file that we are working on but the groovy or uh, means the spock testing is the groovy file that we are working on and also like integration testing uh, also we have we have like separate uh, like uh, uh, separate separate groovy files to check the check the rest and rest, rest end points we actually have like local dynamo db is created and in that way we actually setting uh, means creating the creating the table as well as putting the data and then we are actually sending the response and in that way uh, in that way the response and response actually comes then we are actually checking that uh, checking the response so basically in this way we are doing the integration testing as well so um can we design kpis from scratch yes what are some of the challenges in this um yeah uh, i can i can tell you what once uh, once i wish that was uh, like the 
a price upload service. Previously, uh, we actually not worked on like uploading part where we are uploading one file, uploading one CSV file, and uh, that studio was assigned to me. Uh, that was like quite old, old one. I'm actually talking about. So in that case, uh, we actually had some research about that um, means how actually we can uh, we can get the get the file and process the file. For that, we are actually using the multi-part file that was previously not known, uh, and we actually uh, do some POCs to get the get the file and also just process. If we get the file, then it then it's easy. Then we are actually parsing. Uh, then we are actually checking the checking the content. Then we are actually split, splitting them with a with a comma and setting setting up the result. So that was like the normal normal thing, but. Just to get, just to retrieve the file, that was like quite challenging as multi-part file was not known to us, known to me as well. So that is the thing. Okay. And also we have like one more challenges in that multi-part file uh, means uh, just to create that API contract, uh, we need to we need to set what are what are the means uh, what is what is the type that application not JSON. At that time also we are actually facing some problem, but then that was, that was solved by like exactly not remembering, but using multi-part something that was actually solved in the API contract as well. Okay. 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 Uh, so Spring Boot Starter uh, is like the dependency and when you are actually adding that dependency let's say Spring Boot Starter Web. So when you add that dependency what it will actually do, it will actually pull all the all the related jars, all the related dependencies that were assigned to assigned to that uh, starter, starter project. It actually pulls out everything and stores into your, your, uh, your, your project and that was part of like uh, I think meta INF was there and in that uh, we also have like uh, separate separate things exactly not remembering those things uh, but we have like uh, separate separate dependencies are uh, coming as part of Maven build and then we can actually go for the go for the service service development let's say we have like uh, using using only the spring boot uh, spring web starter we actually can uh, perform one rest API just like that. Yeah. What is what is the actuator? Uh, actuator is basically uh, like let's say uh, just a moment. <laughs> spring actuator is with in spring actuator is basically uh, it's part of the part of the AOP. Uh, Spring AOP, it's, um, and when you are actually uh, pushing that actuator in, in that, we have like a default default health checking was there. Means we don't have to create uh, one set of uh, set of endpoint that check the health. We actually have predefined health uh, also defined, and also actuator actually can uh, you can actually know about the know about the uh, know about the service as well. Means internal internal service as well. Uh, we have like several uh, several. Uh, Endpoints are there just to check of the what are the what are the beans are there and also um, yeah this this part of the thing that was uh, part of the actuator mainly we are actually using the actuator for the health checking only. Health checking. Um, I have a question I want to ask you. Do you understand what a controller is? Sorry. What? Do you understand what a controller? Controller. Yeah. Uh, so controller is basically uh, where your uh, end, where your means you are putting one endpoint and where your request actually coming at the at the front front end means when you are uh, calling from calling the calling the endpoint then what what is your starting point that is the that is the controller where the request is first coming then we are actually giving them into means we are uh, passing them to service and uh, repository to perform the perform the things so that is the controller. In Spring Boot, we actually have like a REST controller mainly used. So, so DAX uh, can I quite get that? Key. So, what is it really used for? Uh, controller. So what is the purpose of controller? Purpose of controller basically uh, means 
it actually uh, interacts with the with the uh, with the with web or let's say postman where actually hitting the hitting the request and the request actually come to and lands on lands on first on the controller means from dispatcher okay. subject that is the first that is the front controller which actually uh, checks that what okay, is the got it, got it. That, that, that's what that is the keyword okay thank you i was i was waiting to hear about the layer that the dispatcher so yeah means from dispatcher servlet it actually goes to the controller means what are the rest controller or controller and there you actually mapping like request mapping is there from the request mapping it actually sees that, that which controller to call okay okay and uh, you said jenkins is used to can you explain um, um you know, sorry actually not not means not using means not creating okay. the jenkins script actually yeah, using yeah, that i get it. and the point of the question was you understand the difference between continuous integration continuous deployment you always say it together but we understand what the difference is um container uh, can you please repeat that you understand the difference between continuous integration continuous deployment okay so yes it Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 See, I see. I can actually get it. Get the point. Means the thing what I can actually uh, say about uh, that C I C D. What is, what we actually do means whenever we actually pushing some code changes into the into the Git and the Jenkins script was predefined. So what it actually do? It actually uh, creates a jar again. Means it uh, building the building and. testing and create the jar and also run the automation pack if there is the automation pack and then uh, what you are uh, what it is actually doing it actually push that into the docker docker hub so that is like the continuous integration means whenever whenever you are uh, changing whatever changes you are putting into that uh, repository where you are connected with the uh, jenkins and then it will actually uh, like continuously continuously uh, deploying something into docker hub or okay all right so so you have so in in your um, in your case what you know is you, you do the build and then you push it um, into the repository you push it into a branch and then it automatically gets built from there is there a different team that's monitoring the uh, pipeline mm, yes Uh, so what do we, what do we do basically in our local in our local machine we just uh, check it yeah everything is fine then we actually push that into that into branch and where actually the means pipeline already already created for that repository where uh, so in that way whenever we push some changes it will actually catch them and then it will actually build and build and test was automatically uh, running and after the build uh, after the build success it actually pass as like green and then what you actually do it actually uh, means from the from the develop develop branch uh, it actually push that into the docker hub okay um so you said uh, what what are the differences between request mapping and get mapping okay uh request mapping request mapping is like uh, what we what we set uh what we set at the at the uh, class level that is the that is a like request mapping where actually where we actually defined all of the all of the end points that are starting from and the get mapping is like get mapping where we have like uh, uh, something you are actually uh, giving giving the value and as part of the value you are actually getting some let, let's say user user details or employee details we are actually getting as a response so that is like the get mapping but the request mapping what we actually uh, put what i actually say in the class level we actually maintain uh, each and every response mapping with the project uh, with, with the uh, service service name itself in which is a product service then we have like product hyphen service in the request mapping then we have like all the get mappings post mapping okay so this request mapping is actually used in search of any specific Uh, HTTP methods service uh, can handle all the requests. 
uh, it can handle all the all the requests means if you have like uh, if you have like uh, more than more than like get mapping post mapping whatever whatever mapping you have then what you actually do if you have like one get mapping or post mapping let's say slash uh, get employee details and in the request mapping you have like uh, employee service so the total endpoint will be like employee service slash uh, get employee details so in that way you can actually handle all the all the all the methods Alright, now well, just one of the last questions. Do you understand, um, now can you explain what the uh, you know, pros and cons or the advantages and disadvantages are for the microservice architecture? You are just working on a project in which you are moving from monolithic to microservice. So, what is the advantage and are there any disadvantages? Yeah, advantages are, uh, advantages are quite a lot because uh, what we have that means in the monolithic architecture we have like separate 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 dependencies are created uh, let's say i have to do some work but for this there are other 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 needs to the prerequisites have, has to be done so maybe there uh, that is done, that is done by some other 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 guy so that code needs to be push up the push up into the branch then you actually take that branch and start working so in that microservice level there is no such dependencies are there so we have like uh, separate separate service are there where working if we get the get the request uh, mainly mainly the mainly the request what oh, we are getting from the from the from the prerequisite prerequisite one so we can actually directly start with the development and their work can be go simultaneously unless and until uh, we are changing anything uh, as part of like communication means we are changing the endpoint then there is actually no, uh, no such problem in the microservice level we can actually go uh, simultaneously and uh, the work time will be much less and the disadvantage also uh, also is there like monitoring is a big disadvantage uh, in case of microservice because we have to constantly monitor like several several services and several logs are printing we actually have like separate uh, kibana uh, kibana grafana dashboard uh, for checking the logs and all so uh, we need to constantly monitor monitor about the things means what are the what are the services feeling uh, uh, so in the in that way we also have like uh, Eureka Eureka server also. So, so yeah, sorry, just just yeah. to interrupt you there. So yeah. what do you mean when you, when you see a service is failing? How do you fix it? So how main, you fix it? Okay. So mainly uh, mainly if the service is failing, what do you actually do means uh, first of all we actually check the check the logs and from the logs we can actually see means where actually is failing. If it's uh, like from if it's like the normal let's say the service is unavailable, we are actually getting that uh, getting that log that 503 that service is unavailable. Then we are actually checking which service is actually is calling, and we actually check that check that service that service is down or not. So in that way, we actually fix that 503. Or otherwise, if we got like normal 500 that is the internal server error, we actually get the get the logs, and then we actually get the code in the in the local then we actually try to replicate the thing uh, that where it's where it's failing by debugging debugging the codes and all and then after after finishing we actually uh, push that into branch and push that and develop develop means uh, where we are running all the things so in that way we actually check in and apart from that we actually have like different logging service as well uh, where we are sending like exploration ID that is the exploration ID is different from uh, different for the each and every service so in that exploration in from that is exploration ID we can actually identify which service is uh, log is this and then we can directly jump into that service and check uh, check for the check for the logs we can actually directly uh, see uh, the logs for each and every service through putty also Alright, so that sort of concludes what I wanted to ask you. So the current location is Kolkata? Yes, currently I am um, in Kolkata. What is the preferred location? Um, preferred can be, means uh, I, the HR actually told, uh, told me like uh, USD wanna open one office in Kolkata. I am not actually sure about that. But they are actually telling that they are over, means they will open one office in Kolkata. So mainly, mainly Kolkata, 
mainly Kolkata is the location. If not, then uh, Bangalore is also good for me. For experience overall? Uh, total is a five and a half or five, uh, five and a half years of experience. Yeah. You joined October 2015, right? October 26, 2015, right. And uh, are you on this spread now? Mm, yes, I am currently serving one. Okay. Um, when is your last working day? Uh, last will be like 19th or 20th July. HR actually not, uh, I have submitted and also like mailed uh, the HR also uh, but they actually not replied yet but tentative last working day will be like 19th or 20th July. Does your current uh, series? Currently 5.54. Uh, so you said you have an offer, what is that offer for? Uh, it's, how much is that offer? It's 12. So, is it expecting? Mm, I am expecting at least like at least like 13.3 in hand. That means 13.3 Yeah, 13.3 fits then. Sorry? Okay. I, I, when you say in hand, I was just trying to understand are you expecting 13.3 CTC including fixed? Or you're saying no, 13.3 is the fix, then it means whatever the variable components that we have. So the offer that you have, is that all fixed or is that including your variable? No, the, uh, the offer is completely like uh, with, the, with the variable also. Variable was like 5%. Okay, 5%. okay. 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 Uh, you're saying that that's all I wanted to know. So, thank you very much for your time. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Pati. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Yeah, you too. Bye. Thank you. Bye. I'm leaving then.